Hello and welcome to the platform puzzle game Redux, kind of. This tutorial is based off of an old tutorial that was on this channel, which was really a great way to get you thinking about how all these systems that you could design with Playmaker inside of Unity can work together. And it just illustrated a lot of really good fundamentals. So here's a nice updated, refreshed, and cleaned up version of that tutorial. So what we're building here today is a game in which we'll have a character that walks around and can step on these little switches right here, these little platforms. There will be multiple of them, so we'll make those in just a minute. When they step on them, it'll change the color of the button on it. And when all of the colors of the switches are the same, the treasure chest will open. And that counts as the win state. Okay, so it's very simple, it's very straightforward. But I just want to show you how to systematize a lot of these things and just make your life a whole lot easier. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to get rid of this one really quick. First of all, these assets come from Cinti's Polygon Prototype Pack, okay, which you could find here on the Asset Store. It's 10 bucks. It's a great pack. It has a lot of very useful assets that you could be using for all your prototyping needs. There's also uh, Cinti's Starter Pack, which is very similar and has a lot of really great assets that, that you can also use in building this project. You don't need any of these assets in here. You'll see very quickly that you could use something as simple as a cube to make your ground, right? You could take this cube and say that it's 10 by 10 and that could be your ground. And you can even duplicate that and say that, you know, and then on top of that, you could build another cube here and say that this cube will be your buttons that you could stand on. So this will be your button, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so all of this is essentially the same. I'm gonna be using these props but you'll be able to follow along uh, regardless of what you're using. Uh, so let's start with this chest, okay? So if I select this chest here, see we have this prop chest and it has a couple of parts. You have the uh, this root parent object here and then you have the lid, which is a child of it, right? So you can see that it's kind of in two separate pieces, but the root of it is actually uh, this base down here. What I wanna do is just make it so this chest can open up somehow. I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna unpack this prefab completely just so it's just a couple of game objects. It's not tied to the prefab that it came from. And I'm gonna remove these mesh colliders, okay? I'm just removing that and removing that. Okay, we don't need any of these colliders on it right now. So on this uh, base of the chest, I'm selecting it, right click and add an FSM here in the editor. Uh, on this start state, we'll just say this is closed, okay? And what I'm gonna do is come over here to events. I'm gonna create a new event called chest space slash space open. Okay, now I'm going to select this little checkbox to make it a global event. I can come over here, right click, add a global transition and use the transition of the same name. Okay, so we have this chest open. So this state will just be called open. Here is where we could put in something like a tween rotation action. So this tween rotation, what I could do is say the game object we want to rotate will specify it and I'll just drag and drop this lid in here. What we'll do is we'll change it from its current rotation to a local rotation. And we could take a look at our lid here, right? So you could see that this red is our X axis, right? So you can almost imagine this red line here as the hinge, right? The back hinge almost. And we wanna rotate along that. So if you come over here to the rotation and you rotate on X, you can see that that's how it opens and closes, right? So right about, let's say here, negative, negative 115, right? Let's say that we want it to open up to about negative 115. Okay, I'm gonna put it to zero, come back over here to our action. We're gonna say on X, it's gonna be negative 115. And it'll take about an, a second to animate. And the ease type, we're gonna change to ease in out quad. So that means it'll ease in and ease out to create a nice smooth animation. So if I hit play right now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alt. And while I'm holding Alt, I can click this global transition and it'll fire off and do what we need it to do. Okay, there we go, great. So that was just checking if it works. Later on, we'll actually send an event to open the chest, okay? So now that we know that works, we can do it programmatically later. Now we have this button. So if I select this button, it's right here, right? Let me just move this floor up, okay? And we'll move this chest up and our buttons here at the bottom. So our button, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go to prefab, unpack completely. Okay, and I'm actually even gonna rename it. Okay, so we're gonna call this platform button. Okay, and then this I'm gonna rename to the actual uh, button body. Okay, so this platform button, uh, you could see if I come in here, you can see these kind of green lines around it. And sure enough, if I come over to the inspector, it has a mesh collider. I'm gonna get rid of that too, removing that component, okay? 
this platform body uh, does not have any colliders. That's great. We don't want that. But on this platform button, what we will do is add a new component. We're going to add a box collider. And the box collider, it pretty much conforms to the shape of that little base geometry down there, right? That little gray part. It, it fits itself really nicely. That's not what we want. Actually, I'm going to hit this little edit collider button, and I'm going to take this top part, and I'm going to stretch it up. Because what we're going to do is make it so that when the player enters this collider, it'll trigger off the sort of interaction that the button has. Okay, so what I'm going to do is select this little is trigger option. We'll add an FSM to this next. I'm going to right click and add an FSM. And I'm going to put in a trigger event. Okay, so this trigger event action, we're waiting for something to enter it. And we're going to make sure that whatever enters it is has to have a certain tag. So the collide tag we want to specify, we could say it's player. If you don't have a tag called player, you can also make your own by coming up here to the tag option and saying add tag. And then you hit this little plus button and you can add it. But your project should have that. Uh, but yeah, if it doesn't, you can come over here and add it. We'll, we'll add the player in a little while and we'll make the player and we'll give the player the player tag. But for now, let's finish setting this up. So this trigger event, it's waiting for something to collide with the player with something tagged as player. And when it does, it'll send an event. This event, can we can we could just call this next, okay? So hit this to add the transition. And this next transition is gonna fire off to the next state where here we can call this change color, okay? So in this, this is where we'd want to change color. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, I'm just gonna put in a next frame event, okay? So all this does is it waits for the next frame to process before do sending an event. And I'm gonna make a new event called back. Okay, add that transition, and it's gonna send back here. So this doesn't really do anything right now, actually. It's just going to wait for something to enter it, go here, and then it'll send back. Let's make sure that works by putting the player in the scene. So for the player, I'm gonna right click in our hierarchy, go to 3D object, and say capsule. Okay, so this capsule, let's see, where is it? Let's, uh, let's bring it a little closer up, like right here. Okay, so here's our little capsule player. Now I'm gonna right click on the capsule and say create empty parent, and I'm gonna rename this parent as player. Okay, so we have an empty parent, and as a child of it is this little capsule game object. Now what I wanna do is give this some first person controls, and that's a whole tutorial in itself. So instead, what I'm gonna do is, I have the ecosystem installed, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit Alt E to open up the ecosystem, and I'm gonna do filter by templates, and I'm gonna hit browse. And actually, you can see that I already have the player move, player interact, and first person look templates installed here. Okay, so these are the templates that I want to use. If you don't know about the ecosystem or these first person player templates, or if you just want to learn how to make your own first person player controls without these templates, be sure to check out our other tutorials in the core concepts playlist. I'm going to use those on this. This player game object, I'm going to right click and use template first person, first person look. Okay. So it gives me our look FSM. And this is just going to let us move the camera around uh, with the mouse. Okay, so I'm going to put the camera uh, as a child of this player game object. And I'm going to hit, I'm going to right click on transform and reset. That way the camera, you'll see it got centered out to match with that game object. Okay, and I'm just going to put it up here at the top and scooch it out a little bit, uh, kind of like where the eyeballs would be uh, of this player. So on this player game object, on the little look FSM, I'm gonna drag and drop my main camera right here, okay? So that means I could use this now. This should look around just fine. I'm gonna hit play really quick. Okay, cool. Can look up and down, look left and right. Great, let's add the movements now. So I can go over here, add FSM, use template. And this one's not categorized, but it's player move, okay? And I'm just gonna call this move Again, I'm dragging and dropping my main camera in here, and this looks pretty good. And then lastly, I'm just gonna add a character controller, okay? And and let's see how that works out, okay? Hitting play, cool. So I can move around right now, great. So now that I can move around, what I want to do is make sure that this capsule, right? We have our capsule over here, uh, is going to be tagged as player. Okay, and then I'm also just gonna make sure that there is a rigid body on this. It's not using gravity and it's kinematic. That way it's not really interacting with all the crazy physics stuff and it's actually just being moved around by the player controls. All right, so let's keep an eye on this trigger event. We should see this fire off 
once our player enters this little box here. Okay, so I'm going to go forward, and there we go. You can see that it, it gets fired off when we walk into it. Okay, so looking good so far. Okay, now what we want is for this to cycle through some different colors. So in this little change color state, what we'll do is put in a array get next. Okay, in this action, we're going to cycle through an array of colors. So in our variables tab over here, I'm going to go ahead and create a new array, and we're going to call this colors. And the array type will be a color array. Now, I'm not going to set these here, actually. We'll use this in the array get next, but the actual colors that are being used, what we could do is set a start state up here on this platform. Okay, I'm going to set this as the start state, and we'll call this get colors. So in here, what we'll do is put a get FSM array. Okay, and we're going to ask one central sort of authority what the colors are that we should be getting. And that way we have more freedom later to change the colors available to us. Okay, so where are we gonna get these colors from? Well, what we could do is come over here, create a new empty game object and call this game manager. And on our game manager, we can right click, add an FSM and call this, uh, let's just call it info. Okay, so on info, we have our variables tab. And again, we have a, an array called colors. Now here is where we can, well, first of all, set it as a color array, but here is where we can set our colors that we're gonna use. So this one will be red. Okay, let's make it like a nice, light red. Also, let's make sure that down here, the alpha value is all the way up at 255. Otherwise at zero, it's invisible and you can't see anything. Okay, so we'll have red. And I'm actually just gonna eyedropper all of these. Uh, that way, uh, what I could do is just move this part of the wheel and it'll still have that nice little pas pastel part over here. Okay, make it 255 on that one. And we're gonna do green, make sure it's 255 here and then we'll do yellow, okay? And this one is also 255, okay? So we have red, blue, green, and yellow. So we know this variable is called colors. It's on the FSM called info on the game manager, okay? So what I'm gonna do is make sure that in this first state, what we're gonna do is put in a get owner action, and this will store this game object in a new variable. Now, we can make a new global variable and we can call it game manager, I could type that in right now. So you could do that if you haven't already, but I have a global called game manager because a lot of other things that I'm working on in this Unity project use that global variable. You'll see that actually it's the only global variable in here. Uh, so that's good practice, keep your globals to a minimum. This is the one that's always good to have. Okay, so we're storing this game manager game object as the game manager global variable. Okay, and that way other game objects can reference it and get this colors array from it. Okay, so, so this will always be the authority of what the colors are that are available. That way on our platform, we can say with this getFSM array, we're gonna specify the game object as the global variable game manager. The FSM name is info and the variable name is colors. And we're gonna store it here locally on our colors array. Okay, we're not gonna copy the values. It's just, just taking those values directly. If this runs before the game manager has a chance to add itself as this global variable, then uh, then this isn't gonna get anything. So what we actually wanna do is put in just a little wait action here at the top, okay? And we're gonna wait, uh, you know, just half a second. We're gonna make this first state, we're gonna use this little gear right here and change it to action sequence. That way, you see this little arrow got added, there's a little space in between it. So that way this wait action will run and after five seconds, then this get FSM array action will run. And then we can add a finish transition and send off to the rest of our logic here, okay? In the rest of our logic, we can come over here and on a array get next, it'll get the next color, right? And we'll say that there's a loop event. We'll call this new event loop event, okay? And I'm gonna add that and it'll send to the next state. And in this next state, we do a set material color, okay? so. The material color will be for the button body, right? So the game object is actually going to be our button body. And the material, we just won't set that, but the color is a new variable that we'll call next color, okay? So where are we getting that from? Well, back here on the array get next, that's the result that we get every time it cycles through this, that next color, okay? After it sets the material color, we'll just add a transition and send back up here to the top again. Okay, so let's see how that works out for us. Press play, and now if I walk over to it, turns red, turns, <laughs> well, kind of a, an awkward green color, uh, or 
Oh, these are these are sort of awkward colors, huh? Okay, it's a little wonky, I think because of the material that's actually coming from is this polygon prototype material. So honestly, all I'm gonna do is just create my own material. So I'm gonna come over here and create material and call this blank material. And I'm gonna drag and drop it on the button body and to make sure this is actually full white. Uh, we'll change the smoothness down, okay? It's gonna be specular, it's fine. So now when we hit play, let's see if that looks a little bit better. Okay, red, blue, green, yellow. So now that this platform changes colors when we walk on it, let's make it a prefab so we could set up multiples of these. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this down here into my project and that creates a prefab. So now you can see also up here has a little blue icon letting us know that it's a prefab. With it selected, I'm gonna hit control D. And I'm gonna move it up like right here. So there's another one. And I'm gonna duplicate that one, move it over here. So there's another one and duplicate that. Okay, so there's four of them. And also you could make as many as you want. Uh, but what we wanna do now is make sure that they're all together and we can reference all of them. So I'm gonna put this right here. I'm just kind of organizing them all like this, right? So we have all four of them in a row here in our hierarchy. So I'm gonna select all of them by selecting the first one, holding shift and selecting the last one. And I'm gonna right click and say, create empty parent. I'm gonna name this parent called all buttons, okay? Now what we can do is tell our chest, let me actually rename this to just chest, okay? So we can see that better. On, on our chest, we can add a new event called chest space slash space button pressed. Okay, we're gonna make that a global event. I'm gonna right click in here, add global transition chest button pressed. Okay, so what we wanna do is make it so that every time a button's pressed, the chest will check all of the button's colors and if they're all the same, then it opens. And if they're not, then it doesn't do anything. So on button pressed, what it'll do is it'll say, get next child, okay? And the game object that we're getting children from will be our all buttons. So it's gonna be a way of cycling through all the children of this all buttons game object. It's gonna store the next child as a new variable. We'll call this next button, okay? And we'll add a loop event. We'll just be called loop event. And the finished event, we'll make a new event called complete. Okay, we're gonna add that. And so our loop event's gonna come down here. What it's gonna do is it's gonna get button color. Okay, so it wants to get the color of each of these buttons. So if we go to the, one of these buttons, right, remember that inside of this prefab, what we have here is when we set the color, we're using this variable called next color. So that's the name of the color that we want to get. So back out here in our chest, it's going to have a get FSM color. Okay, so we're going to say on our next button, we don't need to specify the FSM name because there's only one FSM on there. So it'll just automatically get the first and only FSM that's on there. But we do know that the variable is called next color. And we'll store that as a local variable also called the same thing. Okay, so what it does is it'll get that and then it'll do an array add. And so what we're gonna do is every time we get the neck, we get the next button in this list, then we get its color and then we add its color to a list. That way at the end, we could check if all of those in the list are the same. All right. so. In here, we're gonna call this, we're gonna make a new array, and we'll say that this is our all current colors, okay? And this array is a color array, all right? So this array, all current colors, and we're adding the value next color. And then when it's done, it just sends back up here to the top, and it just loops those and gets all those, makes the array of all the colors. And when it's complete though, we're gonna send it to a new state. And here is where it check if all colors match. Okay, that's what's happening here. So what we're gonna wanna do first is an array get, just an array get. Okay, we're getting from all of our current colors, we're getting index zero. So that means the first entry in these colors. And we're gonna store this as a new variable called first color because what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare everything to this first color. And since everything has to match for us to win and for the chest to open, that means that if any of them are not the same as this first color, that they are not all the same, right? So we're getting the first color, right? This is our sort of authoritative color. Then once we're done with here, once we're done here, we have this finished transition. And down in the next state, we do an array get next. So this is the one that we're gonna cycle through. So 
the array get next goes through all current colors. And this is going to loop through all of them. So for this one, we just get the first one. But for this one, we're cycling through them. The loop event, we're going to add a loop event. The finished event, we're adding a complete. And the result we'll call next color, right? So the loop event will come down here. By the way, let's just name this get next color to compare. OK, and in here, we're going to put in a color compare. So the colors that we want to compare are the first color to the next color. Now we can use this equal and not equal event as a way of answering the question. Same color question mark, right? So equal would be new event called yes. And not equal would be a new event called no. OK, so if it's the same color, yes, that means we can send back up to here to this get next color to compare so we can check the next one. But if the answer is no, then we send to another state. And here is where we would say kind of like fail, try again, right? Now, here, what we do need to do is reset this little system so it knows to check again sometime else. So in this uh, get next color to compare, we're going to put a little uh, reset flag. So we're going to make a new variable, call this reset flag underscore all print colors. OK, so we make a reset flag specific to this. Uh, and then in here, we do a set bool value to true for that reset flag. That way, that thing gets to reset. So back up here on the next color to compare, if it successfully cycles through all of these without ever having gotten here, then this complete event can fire off. And we can call this a win state. OK, and in our win state, we put in a send event. Okay, and it'll be a broadcast all and we'll send the event chest open. Okay, which is right here. Okay, so you could do this logic somewhere else, right? Like it could have been handled somewhere else, but it's nice to have it with these cool little global events. All right. All I have to do is make sure that this chest button pressed gets fired off whenever we step on a thing. So I'm going to hop into the prefab really quick and over here on the set material color, I'm going to put a send event and it'll be a broadcast all sending global event chest button pressed. OK, and that way back in our scene when we play this, I have my chest selected so you could see down here that hopefully when I go to step on this button, right, it said button pressed and all that fired off, but it said fa fail, try again. Right. So if I do that, it's blue, fail, try again, right? Because it's a blue and three whites. Fail, try again, right? It's just green. So now I go to this one, does it again. That's a blue one. That's red one. That's a red one. So we have two reds, a green and a blue. So now if I change this to red, right? Now this last one, blue, we should see that we win and the chest should open if I turn it to red. It's green, yellow, and red. Now the thing is, over here under the same color, take a look at this. The color compare, first color, next color, that's black. But obviously everything here is red. So let's check this next color, what's happening when we try to get this next color. Well, look at this. Look at this array. How many elements does it have? 63 elements. That's because this array has just been building and building and building and building every time we run this. So what we need to do, stop this really quick. We need to make sure that this gets reset. So on the fail, try again. What I'm going to do is an array remove all. It's going to remove all of our current colors. OK, that way, every time it comes back over here, it has a fresh array to build. OK, let's try running that. So I'm going to do this as red, this is red, this is red, and this is red. And look at that, our chest opens. And now what's cool about that is that, you know, you can come over here to your game manager and make even more colors you want. You can add a ton more platforms and it'll all scale with the whole system. So we could say that we're going to take two of these, we're going to duplicate them and move them like right here. So now there's like even more buttons. We could say that on our game manager, we're going to say that there's like, you know, uh, six colors. So we're going to add, you know, like a pink one. And we're going to add like, like this kind of aqua one. 
And so now, to play it, and you know, we can have multiple colors in here, pink and aqua, right? So it'd be cool too if all these platforms picked a random color to set for themselves, right? So if we go inside this prefab and in the get colors, right? So on the first state here, it says get all these colors. We could just do an array get random, right? So it gets from this array and we're gonna say the colors, we'll store the value as next color and then we'll do a set material color at the bottom here. We're gonna be changing the color of our, our button body, right? And we'll use that color, next color, okay? So that way all of our uh, buttons will have a random color when we start the game, okay? So we have three greens, two reds, and a purple. So let's change this to green, okay? So we have, oh, that one's actually not even green over there. That one's like one of those kind of aqua ones, huh? So I'm gonna change this to green and this to green. And this last one over here is kind of an aqua color, but when I change it to green, we should be good. Blue, green, and there you go. So you see, that's a really robust way to scale up a system. So, you know, I know that the game itself is really simple, right? But you can imagine that with these ways of thinking of sort of like systematizing things in this way, if you decided to make a whole game based off of this sort of color matching thing that as each level progresses, it would be easy for you as the designer to scale it up, to add more buttons, add more colors and change things like that, right? So that's how you could build a nice, simple platform puzzle game that's nice and scalable with Playmaker. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.